Hi right, hey guys, it's Sasha. Welcome back to Reading with Toby. Today I am so excited. All of my packages finally arrived from ah, from Book Depository. So as you all know, Book Depository is now officially closed, which is so sad. I don't know why they ended up closing, but it was definitely one of my favorite places. I think a lot of us, we loved Book Depository because you could get so many great like UK editions, so many cool editions, and it was inexpensive, free worldwide shipping. It's so sad that it's closed. So I, of course, had to go make just a couple of purchases, just a couple. Just a couple. I tried to get like editions that I could only get on a book depository, obviously. And I thought it would just be fun to do a full unboxing of the last books that we can get from book depository. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up them at random and we'll just go from there. I remember the books that I got, but like obviously I don't know what order these in. I don't, I don't know. I can't remember for some of them if I decided to get paperback or hardback. Who knows? <laughs> All right, so let's get started with our first one here. Oh, sad. You all get to see first. Oh, I'm trying to think. Oh, oh okay. Oh, oh, I did not know it was this neon pink. Oh, wow. Oh my, it really got damaged though. But to tell, it's like bent and it got torn. Which I have to say has never happened before with Book Depository. So it's kind of sad, but you know, that's okay. That's all right. So this is The Mountain in the Sea by Ray Naylor. Okay, also I need to preface that like a lot of these books, I don't actually know what they're about. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> this one is so gorgeous. Look, look at that spine. Oh my gosh, so yeah, I will put the American edition here, which the American edition actually caught my eye in the bookstore, um, but I didn't end up picking it up. And then I saw this edition on Simon from Savage Reads. He pointed it out and I was like, oh my God, that is beautiful. It turns out it was the exact same book. So let's see what it looks like underneath. It's just a bright yellow underneath. Okay, so I think this is a, a fiction comma science book. When pioneering marine biologist Dr. Ha is to travel to investigate a highly intelligent, dangerous octopus species, she doesn't pause long enough to look at the fine print. Dianima, a transnational tech corporation best known for its groundbreaking work in artificial intelligence, has purchased the islands, evacuated their population, and sealed the island off from the world so that Nugan can focus on her research. But the stakes are high. The octopuses, isn't it octopi? But no one has yet asked the octopuses what they think and what they might do. Oh, that sounds so great. So I knew this just had a bunch of science in it, which I love my fiction with science. Um, and then octopi, octopuses are already very fascinating creatures. So this just sounds so great. I think this is gonna be such a fun read. And again, I love this cover. Can't wait to put it on my pink shelf there. All right, so this is the first one. So beautiful. Okay, I'm going to grab a smaller book now. Ooh, nice. I'll show you all first. Oh, uh, okay, yep. So this is Brown Girls by Daphne Palissy on Dreadas. I don't know how you say any of these names, but I had, I, had to get the UK edition. Look at how stunning. And this is one where I saw on Instagram, like I saw this cover and immediately I wanted to buy it. I didn't care what it was about. Um, I needed it. <laughs> and then it turns out it's about these sad girls in New York City, which is one of my favorite things to ever read about. Brown Girls dives deep into the lives of, into the lives of a group of young women of color growing up in Queens, New York. I know I'm gonna love this. This cover's freaking gorgeous. And it's a short little contemporary fiction. This is gonna be so great. Oh my gosh. I love this. And then the spine is so cool with this neon yellow. Oh yes, this is gorgeous. This is like a nice little size paper bag. I don't know, I already like it. Okay, so there's that one there. Next, we'll just do this one on top. This is another like thick one. Let's see. Ooh, I feel like I'm gonna need some water. I'll get some after this one. 
Show you first. Oh, there we go. Oh, this is gorgeous. I guess we didn't get any um, bookmarks, which is perfectly fine. Oh, this is a, I knew this was a big book, but the font isn't too big either. Oh my gosh. All right, so this is what I got. And this is The Shards by Brett Easton Ellis. This is by the same man who wrote American Psycho, which I never read. Don't really want to read it. Um, the movie was interesting um, with Christian Bale, but I saw this and I was already curious because it's about a group of young boys, which is something that I love to, I will link a video down below where I talk about things that I love in books, like certain little tropes or certain things like sad people in New York City. I love following a group of male friends. <laughs> I'll leave that video down below because I asked for some recommendations and some of these books are gonna be for a vlog series for that. Anyway, so that is something that this had, but then I saw this Instagram review and the way they raved about it and talked about it, it made me so curious about this. And I really, really love this edition. The spine is really nice. I really like this. Okay. Many years ago, I realized that a book, a novel, is a dream that asks itself to be written in the same way we fall in love with someone. The dream becomes impossible to resist. There's nothing you can do about it. You finally give in and succumb even if your instincts tell you to run the other way because this could be, in the end, a dangerous game. Someone will get hurt. That is an interesting thing to put on the back of this book, right? Whoa, look at the end pages. That, those are cool end pages. Like a yearbook. So this takes place in LA in 1981. So we're at a prep school. You're following a 17 year old named Brett, which is interesting because it's the same name as the author. And he uh, becomes best friends with this other guy named Robert Mallory. He becomes part of their close friendship group, which is already something that I know I'm going to love. But then they become obsessed with this serial killer who's on the loose. A serial killer on the loose who seems to be drawing even closer to Brett and his friends, taunting them with grotesque threats and horrific, sharply local acts of violence. I cannot wait to read it. I think this is going to be the perfect like summer read. I can't wait. Okay, I'm gonna pause and get some water. All right, let's do the next package. We'll do a thinner book now. Let's see. There we go. All right, I'll let you see first. This is such a thin book. Oh, yep. Oh, interesting. Oh, this one got a little bit damaged too. Dang. It's okay, I'm able to fix it a little bit because it's a paperback. All right, so this is, oh, I really like this, how this feels. Um, <laughs> this is Children of Paradise by Camila Grudova. This is another one that I got for that series. I love this cover and I got this one because I want to read more books with like film or Hollywood in it. And this I believe is kind of a um, thriller horror book that takes place at a movie theater. But when the elderly owner dies, the cinema is sold to a theater chain, and as the integrity of the cinema, cinema is stripped away, it's no surprise that violence strikes, tempers change, and the group eye still affixed to the screen starts to rapidly grow awry. I don't know, that just sounds so interesting. This was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction this year as well, so I am very excited to read this. I think this is going to be a fun book, and I love this cover. Next. We have this one here. Okay. All right, let me see first. Oh, oh, this book is a lot bigger than I thought. Look at that. Okay, so this is Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell. And I love this edition. So this book, oh, I really like this cover. Oh, look at how floppy that is. Are you kidding me? Love it. Okay, so this book I actually saw on an Instagram or TikTok reel or TikTok reel, <laughs> Instagram reel or TikTok. Um, and this girl was sh uh, showing all these recommendations for books that are have Daisy Jones and the Six vibes but are better because I only gave that book like three stars. I love the TV show. I'm obsessed with the TV show. Oh, look at these end pages, which is why I'm like, interested to read something that has similar vibes but she said this one is like daisy jones and the six but with better writing and i was like absolutely yes i saw this cover and i had to get it i just love the like yellow and orange 
with this like off-white uh, background. I really, really love it. Okay. So the year is 1967 and word is spreading about a new band on London's psychedelic scene. An unlikely combination of a female folk singer, a blues bassist, a jazz drummer, and an electric guitarist. Strangers to each other and from wildly different backgrounds, together they create magic. Meet Utopia Avenue. This is the story of a unique band's brief blazing journey from Soho dives to chart success on the promised land of America just when the summer of love was giving way to something much darker. A tale of dreams, drugs, sexuality, madness, and grief, and a fame's pitfalls. Yeah, it sounds exactly like exactly what I want, so I cannot wait to read this one. This is gonna be so good. I like, I kind of want to read this like right now. I think I'm gonna love this. Look at this with like the record track and then it has the names of the records and then it looks like each chapter is the name of the record. I love that. It's also kind of like Daisy Jones and the Six. Another great one I think for summertime. So there is that. Look at that spine. Oh my gosh, beautiful. All right, so we have this one. Mm -hmm. This one I know what it is because it's so tiny. This is a little, um, Little Black Classic Edition um, from Penguin. And this is The Death of Ivan Ilyich by Leo Tolstoy. This is number 87. And I do want to start collecting some of these little um, Penguin Black, uh, Little Black Classics Edition. They have like this incredible, like giant set, which I would love to own one day, but they're so hard to find now and they're so expensive. So I thought maybe I would just start collecting them. But anyways, um, I read Anna Karenina earlier this year. One of my now all-time favorite books, Leo Tolstoy, is an incredible writer, and I want to read more of his writing this year. Um, so I decided to pick this little edition up. It just says, laying humanity bare, these two devastating stories ask, is it possible to have a good death and what does it mean to truly live? And I know this is gonna be incredible because some of those themes were talked about in Anna Karenina. It is only a bruise. Look at that. Wow. Okay, I'm so excited for this one. <laughs> Only two more books. Okay, let's do it. Oh, nice. Okay, so this one here is Venomous Lump Sucker by Ned Bowman. Gorgeous. So this book, I think, is similar to... The Mountain in the Sea in that it is a like thriller, um, kind of like science-y book, but I think this one is more about climate change. Um, I saw this book originally on Sunbeam's Jess's channel, which I'll link her channel down below. Down below. Um, she loved this book and I've never heard anyone else talk about it. She, it was one of her favorites of 2022. Ever since she talked about it and said it was really weird. Oh, look at that, an orange underneath, interesting. Ever since she talked about it, I was very interested. So it says, a darkly funny and incisive zoological thriller from the age of extinction rebel, for the age of extinction rebellion. The venomous lump sucker is the most intelligent fish on the planet, or maybe it was the most intelligent fish on the planet because it might already be extinct. Nobody knows and nobody cares except for two people. <laughs> Gripping and singular venomous lump sucker is a comedy about environmental devastation that asks, do we have it in us to avert the tragedy of mass extinction? And also, do we really need to bother? That sounds so good. This is gonna be so fun. And she said it was like, it was a little bit weird. Right, I really am looking forward to this. The back is really cool too. And I just had to get this edition because it's so cool. Like how could you not want to read this? Okay, really, really like that. So that is that one. <gasps> okay, the last book. How sad. These are all so beautiful. Okay, <laughs> let's see what the last one is. I kind of forgot. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, okay, this is The Five Sorrowful Mysteries of Andy Africa by Stephen Burrow. Oh, wow. Oh, this is debut novel, okay. Sorry, I'm just like in love with this. So I chose this edition, this beautiful yellow cover. Um, I saw this again on Simon from Savage Reads channel and the cover like immediately caught my eye when he pulled it up with the Marilyn Monroe picture and then he said it was by a Nigerian author and I was like what? 
how interesting. So I'm just like curious, like why is there a picture of Marilyn Monroe on the cover? That's like it. <laughs> And I am down to read it. So let's actually find out what this is about together because I truly, I have no idea. I just bought it. Okay, 15 year old Andrew Aziza lives in Contagora, Nigeria, where his days are spent about a town, about town with his droogs, Slim, and Maraca, fantasizing about white girls, especially blondes, and wondering who his father is. Ah, uh, there we go. When he's not in church, at school, or attempting to form Africa's first superheroes, he obsesses over mathematical theorems, ideas of black power, and HXVS, the curse of Africa. Sure enough, the reluctantly nicknamed Andy Africa soon falls hopelessly in love with the first white girl he lays eyes on. How interesting. But at the church party held, okay, I don't wanna read anymore. I don't want anymore. I'm just gonna look at the bottom. Profound, exhilarating, and original, The Five Sorrowful Mysteries of Andy Africa is a sunny exploration of the ordinary but impossible challenges of coming of age in a turbulent world from a dazzling new literary voice. Okay, done. So curious about this. Wow, I love that. Isn't that gorgeous? Yellow, love it so much. All right, guys, so that is the last of the books. Let me pick up this beautiful stack. For all of the books that I picked up from Book Depository, this has to be one of the most beautiful stacks of books I've ever hauled. Look at how gorgeous. Here, I'll just let you all just take a gander. Look at how beautiful. <laughs> I am so excited to read all of these. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am so excited to pick up all of these books. Let me know if you are interested in any of these books. Um, if you want to read any of them, any of them you think I need to get to right away. Um, let me know if you also try to get snag some things up before book depository close. But yes, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll catch you all in my next one. Bye.